ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾರ್ಥಾಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿತಾಂ ಭಗವತಾ ನಾರಾಯಣೇನ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿತಾಂ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನೀನಾಮಧ್ಯೇ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣೀ ಭಗವತೀಮಷ್ಟಾದಶಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿನಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಧಾಮಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿಣಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಂಪ್ಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ and we saw in the eighth shloka how shri krishna talks about a yogi who is a yogi who is a yukta who is a triptatma who has obtained jnana and vijnana who is a kutastha who is um, who has mastered the balance of life who is absolutely firm unmoved by what happens outside and he sees a lump of mud and uh, stones and gold everything i like everything is a beautiful creation everything is beautiful so even gold is got in the same mud and just some mud that we see all over the road is the same so he doesn't get obsessed about something or is is not contemptuous about something the idea of this is valuable and this is not valuable is just a human it's a relative uh, calculation a, a relative idea created by humanity in a society that's all so in reality everything is just a part of this world so krishna continues and says in the ninth shloka of the sixth chapter suhrun mitra yudasina madhyasthadveshya bandhushu sadhushva picha papeshu samabuddhir vishishyate so suhrun means friend mitra uh, also friend ari that is shatru that is enemy udasina people who are neither both neither a friend nor a uh, enemy madhyastha one who is both my friend and the enemy's friend and uh, dveshya one who just hates bandhushu one who is a close relative somebody who supports us sadhushu somebody who is very good very noble by nature sadhushva picha papeshu some who are very very sinful in all of these people it could be my friend or enemy somebody who is both my friend and my enemy's friend somebody who is neither and somebody who is close to me my relative somebody who supports me somebody who is noble by nature somebody who is evil by nature samabuddhir vishishyate he has a samabuddhi towards everybody he sees everybody alike in this play of life everybody is there and not everybody is always a papi or not everybody is always a sadhu uh, different types of episodes in life the wrong understanding of the wrong way of perceiving life makes us commit sins sin is a temporal problem it is not a permanent nature like in the abrahamic faiths they talk about absolute evil the shaitan etc in the sanatana dharma when i say sanatana it's inclusive of buddha jaina sikha and uh, our vaidika tantra agama all the orient tribal everything we don't have anything called absolute evil there is only absolute bliss there is only satchidananda and what is evil then it is a temporary problem it is like a cloud coming and going obstructing the sunlight so the crowd is formed then it melts down similarly there are moments weak moments in our mind and intellect which make our us commit sins they are temporal problems once somebody called as for me vivekananda in the west tell us something about the concept of sin in your uh, hindu dharma he, he laughed and said we are amrita putra to for us to call a person a sinner is the biggest sin there's no sinner here sin is a temporal problem then he gives an example and he says it is natural to walk it is normal to walk but once in a while if i'm careless i may trip and fall so tripping and falling is a moment of carelessness and it is not my natural nature it is very normal and natural to walk but to trip and fall is a momentary uh, problem because of carelessness similarly to be good to do good is a very natural nature but when we because of some wrong perceptions or wrong uh, training or whatever if we no, do not tame the mind and intellect properly we develop some negativity and because of that we commit sins we speak untruth we speak lies we are harsh we uh, hurt others etc but then we uh, they will be a time when we'll slowly come out of all that negativity it'll just fall apart so swami vivekananda says look at everybody with compassion 
help them to come out of that phase of sin sin is a passing phase it is not our nature that's a great way to understand sanatana dharma here also shri krishna says a real yogi a yogi who has obtained the samasthiti to him everybody is the same it doesn't mean that he uh, he says okay uh, even a sinner should flourish it's not like that he sees everybody equally he gives equal dignity to everybody but if he is in a decisive position where he has to decide if he is a king if he is a ruler if he is a policeman if he is a judge he has to judge whether what is wrong what is dharma and what is adharma he will do it dispassionately to him everybody is the same but if he has to do his duties he will definitely punish the sinner and help the uh, noble person but not out of personal vengeance at the level of a uh, uh, personal life to him everybody is the same he will give equal respect dignity and love to everybody he will not have personal hatred towards anybody but when the time comes to decide what is right or wrong if somebody is on the side of dharma it could be his own people his own kith and kin his own children or family members or community members if they are on the path of dharma he will support them but if they are on the path of adharma his own children his own family himself anybody who is on the path of adharma they deserve to be punished they deserve to be curbed and snapped and put down and he will do it this explains how shri rama could build a rama rajya in the rama rajya no pani could escape the law of rama because rama was ruthless he 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 also uh, practiced dharma and he ensured that everybody practiced dharma because he was dispassionate he had no partiality whatsoever towards anybody and that comes only with a sama bhava one who sees everybody alike everybody has a right to live in this world but nobody has a right to snatch the rights of others nobody can say this is my right so i will have my way and this having one's way should not affect somebody else if i want to drive my car in whatever way i want i should go to an outskirts of the city if i do it in midst of the city in a very busy traffic junction and say i don't care for traffic rules this is my car this is my life my money i don't care and if i rush and because of my folly somebody else's life is at stake some accident happens then i'm really accountable that should not be allowed to happen if people claim liberty my rights my such individualism is very very dangerous we should always think in a uh, with a sense of a uh, responsibility towards the community that can only come when we stand above our desires when we think in a balanced way a yogi gets it naturally he sees everybody alike he has equal respect for everybody even for a sinner even for an offender at the personal level he even forgives them you see how rama forgave kai kai not a word he told against her see how rama forgave mantara although nobody else could forgive her see how sita forgave the whole of ayodhya people who spoke nonsense against her and separated the great couple see how krishna uh, repeatedly uh, forgave shishupala see how the pandavas forgave the kauravas repeatedly how draupadi forgave uh, uh, ashwatthama so there are so many instances how uh, buddha forgave angulimala so that comes very naturally at the personal level but the same rama would hold his bow and arrow and punish those who are offending the society at large so at a larger picture in a larger picture somebody who is dangerous to the society has to be forgi- has to be destroyed has to be punished and curbed and controlled but at the personal level we can always forgive at the personal level sama bhava towards everybody everybody is evolving in a different speed and pace and style we have to give them that much of room that much of time and we have to have the love and compassion to bear with them for some time only when the duty is calling and we need to decide and put down adharma then we will have to act against people who are wrong otherwise at the personal level to look at everybody as just a jeeva who is evolving in one's own way is the way to live that is why sanatana dharma is gives us room for evol- evolution we are all evolving slowly slowly through different births and rebirths we have to be compassionate towards the world love the world wait for things to happen we should not expect 
miracles to happen and impose change upon others impose our ideas upon others converting people influencing people trying to get my things done trying to get things done in my way to be known to be heard to be uh, assertive to be dominant all these nonsense comes because a person is suffering inferiority complex from within all these demonic faiths and demonic uh, personalities who try to change the world impose upon the world control the world are actually suffering inferiority complex deep in their hearts they know that they are violent and they are demonic and they are rogues but they want to cover that up and they try to do all these things and in the name of religion or in the name of saving everybody they are imposing their ideas on others and spoiling the charm of life but a person who is a true sthita pragna true yogi he understands that everything happens very naturally we are only facilitating anybody's growth or Uh, we are just supporting somebody we should not intervene into anybody's life or personality or ways so we should respect everybody even a sinner a noble man or a sinner or a friend or a foe everybody are just souls living on this earth everybody has a right to live everybody should live with dignity and i should not create problem for anybody so this is an approach which uh, krishna says is the way to live and uh, we'll see what he says next in the next shloka in the next episode namaste jai shri krishna tv vikrama national bharat bhagya vidata subscribe tv vikrama national and don't forget to click bell icon button and select all notification